Shadow the Scientist is an initiative that we started a little over a year ago when, because of the pandemic, we couldn't travel to the telescopes and we were operating telescopes from our home using Zoom in what is called pajama mode. And the science team would be distributed geographically, but they were connected through Zoom. So we decided we would open up that Zoom link to others around the world. The science we're conducting is we are taking spectra of individual stars, kind of stars called Aralari, that are like beating hearts, they pulse. They pulse and so they're very easy to find, but they also are standard candles in that they all have the same brightness, they have the same wattage, intrinsic brightness. We're using them to study the structure and dynamics of our galaxy. There are four of us involved in this science project, a PhD student, a postdoctoral researcher, and two faculty, including myself. For this research project, we're using the Keck 2 10-meter telescope on the summit of Mauna Kea on the Big Island of Hawaii. And the Keck 2 telescope focuses light onto different instruments we are using the ESI instrument, a shell spectrograph and imager, to take spectra of individual stars, one star at a time. While we are using the Keck telescope on this next STS session, in the past we've used the Lick Observatory Shane 3 meter telescope on Mount Hamilton in California, and we've used the Japanese Subaru 8 meter telescope on the summit of Mauna Kea. These have been for different science projects. We think that events like these offer very specific opportunities to the general public and the general public includes students, very young students even, educators and other interested folks. The opportunities it offers is it allows people to engage with scientists while they're doing their research, in this case astronomers, while they're using telescopes. It allows people to see the process of decision making and problem solving. And finally, it allows people to be part of these very grand science questions about the universe. When we held these events first, we thought, okay, this is really boring. We are going to be doing our work. Most of the time, you know, we are just taking long exposures and nothing much is happening and when something is happening that's actually bad for the experiment which means something is breaking or not working properly but when things are working smoothly it's actually very boring for the scientists because everything is running smoothly and we thought it might be boring for people to watch you know just us taking long exposures but the reaction has taken us by surprise people have been very um, attracted to the notion that this is something real going on in real time that they're experiencing this with the scientists it's not curated, it's not prepared, it's authentic. I think the authenticity of the events has been attractive to people. The next Shadow of the Scientist session will be this Friday, March 4th. It will be Friday, March 4th in California. Uh, in Europe and Asia, it will already be the morning of March 5th. We will be using the Keck telescope and ESI spectrograph to study Aralari stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Now, the future goals of Shadow the Scientists are first to extend this beyond my research group so that other astronomers using other telescopes are offering such opportunities. We want to make it very easy for other astronomers and the observatories to offer such opportunities. And it's called Shadow the Scientists, not Shadow the Astronomers, because our goal, and this is something we're already working on, is to get other scientists, biologists, oceanographers, computer scientists, electrical engineers, to think about how they can engage the public in their research.